gentlemen, I thought I could talk to you in a quiet, civilized way. But it looks like that is out of the question. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Hey, boy, if you don't mind, I'm taking a bath. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Paladin. Uh, hey, boy, remember this fact, so he know just where to deliver an important-looking telegram for you. You see? Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. And to you, every telegram is important. Yes, sir. But it could have waited until after my bath, hey, boy. Oh, uh, hey, boy, not like to call slow down in great system of communication. All right, hey, boy, bath or no bath, I guess we can't disrupt the nation's flow of information. Would you read it, please? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Paladin Carlton Hotel. Uh, need help at your price to stop range war. A $500 deposit with telegram. Advise. James Ellis, Mayor Preston, Arizona. James Ellis, Mayor? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you know him? Well, if, if it's the Jim Ellis I'm thinking of, I certainly do. He was the slickest gambler and confidence man east or west of the Mississippi River. You're going to help him? Well, uh, $500 deposit, huh? Telegram man say you can pick it up at the office. Uh, I can't see G. Mellis as mayor of anything except perhaps a penitentiary. But I guess it must be true. Yeah, Miss Al Paladin want Hey Boy to pack for him or get ticket for a uh, stagecoach? Yes, Hey Boy. You do that. <laughs> Right now, I'm going to enjoy this bath. It may be the last one I'll have for quite a while. In the air. On the sea. On the highway. The man in command must be awake and alert. And no doze, stay awake tablets help you stay in command when you slide behind the wheel of your car and move more than a ton of automobile into highway traffic. You see, monotonous driving can make you drowsy no matter how much sleep you get. And driving and dozing just don't mix. But millions of times a year, safe no doze helps keep drivers awake and alert. How does no doze do it? Ask your doctor. He'll tell you that no doze contains a safe and accurate amount of caffeine, the same refreshing stimulant you get in your coffee or tea. But safe no-dose acts faster, is handier, and more reliable. Best of all, it is not habit-forming. Yes, no-dose is so safe, it is legally sold on a national basis without a prescription. Get no-dose stay-awake tablets today. It could save your life. The stagecoach ride to Preston left something to be desired, namely some other means of transportation. We rode through mile after mile of magnificent cattle country, large ranches and small. Preston was the center of this cow kingdom, a booming, growing, prosperous community. As I got off the stagecoach, any doubts I may have had that Mayor James Ellis might not be the Jim Ellis I knew were soon dispelled. Paladin! <laughs> Paladin, you old renegade, am I glad to see you. I don't believe it. Well, I am. Sent for you, didn't I? Got your telegram saying you was coming, too. Well, that's right, Jim. I just meant that I don't believe that you're the duly elected mayor of this fine little town. People must not know you as well as I do. <laughs> Good old Paladin, always joking. <laughs> well, what they don't know won't hurt them, Paladin. Now, don't you give me away. Hey, come on down to my office in the hotel lobby, Paladin. We'll renew our old friendship. You mean your office is the hotel lobby? <laughs> Why, sure, ain't everyone? Oh, afternoon, Mrs. Cartwright. Come on, Paladin. I got a big job for you to do. I'm in real trouble. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned a range war in your telegram. Well, that's what it is. Oh, howdy there, Fred. And you got to stop it. This is the first honest job I've ever had, Paladin, and I got to keep it. Honest? <laughs> it's political, isn't it? Well, honest up to a point, maybe, but it's respectable. 
Well, what does a range war have to do with your job? Well, Paladin, if it gets started and drags out, it could ruin this whole valley. Set the town back five years. Ah, no town, no mayor. Ah, uh-huh, that's it. And I got investments that go right out the window with the job. That figures. Howdy, oh, howdy, Ben. <laughs> well, here we are. Okay. Come in. There we are. Sit down, Paladin. All right. All right. Now, uh, who is involved in the so-called range war, Jim? Well, sir, there's two of them ready to fight. Names Marsh Jordan and Jack Sanders. What's the argument? Water rights. And what a mess. Ought to be settled by lawyers and judges, but Marsh and Jack just won't see it that way. They aim to do it with guns. I know the type. Self-made, rugged individualists. You hit it. Well, who are these men? Just the biggest ranchers in Preston Valley, and there's nobody to stop them. Not even the law? No. Ain't been able to keep a sheriff for the last six months. Oh, folks could see this coming. There's no use trying to fight the two of them with a few deputies, that's for sure. <laughs> so you hire just me to do the job, huh? Well, Paladin, I got all the confidence in the world in you. This grand little community needs your help in growing up to be a grand and glorious metropolis in this fair land of ours. Oh, good. These people... Jim, Jim, save the speech for your voters. I'm just the hired help. Uh, well... That's what I'd hoped you'd say, Paladin. I knew you'd help me. I mean, us, the fine folks of Preston. Uh, uh, come here. Take a look out this window. Yeah. All right. You see that saloon over there? Mm-hmm. All right, this minute, Jack Sanders and some of his men is having a drink. Now, you ought to go and have a talk with him and... Oh, no. Now what? You see that big fellow on the walk, the one leading them cowpokes? I see him. That's Marsh Jordan. For a great day, he's going to go into the saloon. Yeah, there'll be trouble for sure. You've got to stop him, Paladin. Just like that. Huh? Well, that's what I hired you for, isn't it? Come on. There, Paladin. I told you they'd be at it. And you nor nobody else from the Sanders outfit is going to get it away from me. Now, Marsh, Jack. Now, men, let's not be hasty. Hey, you keep out of this, Ellis. As mayor of Preston, As I... mayor of Preston, you've got nothing to say about anything between me and Jack Sanders. And you keep your mouth shut, mayor. I'll have my foreman throw you out of here. That goes for your friend, too. Now, what was you saying, Sanders? It's time for a showdown, Marsh. You and me, we'll settle this right here and now. I am willing, Jack. Now, Marsh, Jack, now wait. Jim, you stay out of our way. I wouldn't stop him. You tell me how, Jim, I'll stop him. Now, Jack, if one of us gets killed here, it ain't gonna stop our outfits from fighting it out to a finish. I know that, Marsh. I'm just sick of seeing your face around. Paladin, do something. All right, then, if you want it this way, you just draw. Gentlemen, just a moment. Ellis, I told you and your friend to keep out of this. Now, who do you think you are, mister? Gentlemen, my name is Paladin. And I think that you're both cowards. Now, maybe I didn't hear you right, mister. You wouldn't care to say that again. Not particularly. But if you give me a chance to make my point, I think I could show you it's true. Seemed like I gave you and the mayor a chance to leave. I guess my foreman left to throw you out after all. Hank, put your drink down and take care of him. Oh, no, you don't. Yes. Now, I thought I could talk to you gentlemen in a quiet, civilized sort of way, but it looks like that's out of the question. Now, now, Paladin, don't go too far. There's no going halfway in this job, Jim. Either you hired me to do it or you didn't. What do you mean, hired you? The mayor sent for me to try to stop a range war. That's what I intend to do. By what right? By the right of any man to keep you from destroying this town. Uh, we can take care of our own troubles. Can you? Like Marsh Jordan said, one of you would probably be killed in a shootout. And that would mean his family and his outfit would have to finish the fight. Well, you got any better ideas on settling our differences? I was getting to that. What makes either of you any better than any other citizen? What's wrong with leaving your dispute to the law to settle? Well, you're new here, mister, but you just ask anybody who's got the biggest ranch, who's been here the longest. They'll tell you I have. Marsh Jordan. Uh, now, that ain't quite right, Marsh. The uh, Sanders came to Preston Valley same time as your family. We got 4,000 head of cattle. We run five. But you ain't got a string of 3,000 horses breeding or 40,000 acres of land. Neither. I got 35,000 acres and 50 men riding for me. And I got near as many. And my men are better than yours anyway. Well, there's only one way to find out. Gentlemen, I'm with Gentlemen, I am sure that you're both very important ranchers in the valley. But there are a lot of others involved. 
And that includes all the people of Preston. Any time they can come close to what we got, they can settle things their way if they want. Right now, this is between Jack Sanders and me, and you and all the rest can just stay out of it. Well, Marsh ain't often right, but this time he is. Now, you put that gun away and take the next stage out of Preston. And stay out. You heard him, mister. Yes, I heard him. I realize, gentlemen, that my gun is only a temporary advantage. But in the meantime, I'll make a little deal with you. Uh, let's call it a bet. You just get. Hold up, hold up, Jack. <laughs> I've never been one to turn down a bet. A fair one. Uh, it's more than a fair one, I'd say. In fact, neither one of you could lose. Well, what's your bet, Bobby? You give me 24 hours. Till tomorrow afternoon at four. Uh -huh. If I don't have this settled by then, I'll pay you each five hundred dollars. If I do, you both pay me the same. Uh -huh. Now, how about it? <laughs> I hate to take your money, Mister, but you got yourself a bet. What do you say, Sanders? Well, I, I don't know. Let's give him a ride, Jack. We've been fighting this thing for years. Another twenty-four hours isn't going to matter much. Well, I ain't got five hundred on me, but I'll get it at the bank. The mayor will hold the stakes. Here's my wallet, Jim. Oh. Yeah. There's a little more than a thousand. I have the money on me. Here's my anti mayor. Now, if you don't mind, gentlemen, I'm leaving. Well, keep your gun handy, Mr. Paladin. 24 hours, you'll need it. Come on, Jim. And don't you get too far away with all that money, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Ooh. Great day. Am I glad to be out of there? I know what you mean, Jim. I knew you'd come through, Paladin. Oh, you handle that real good in there. Now, what's your plan now that you've got 24 hours? Well, I'm not sure it'll work, but I know what I'm going to try to do. What? I'll let you know in 24 hours, Jim. Right now, I want to borrow a horse. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Say, Charlie, isn't that your French girlfriend coming into the service department? Yeah, Bergen, isn't she a doll? Pardonnez-moi, monsieur. I don't wish to bother you. Oh, think nothing of it. Beautiful women always bother me. <laughs> it is my automobile. She has a squeak. Oh, poor thing. It probably needs one of our quality guardian maintenance lubrications. Fantastic. How did you know that? Specialized training, ma'am. Specialized training? We, oui. The servicemen at all Chevrolet Pontiac Oldsmobile Buick Cadillac Chevy and GMC truck dealers get special training. That's what makes them guardian maintenance servicemen. They're trained to know your GM product best. You are so wonderful. <laughs> oh, I must kiss you. Uh, gladly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, la la. How did you learn to kiss like that? Specialized training, ma'am. <laughs> hey, you're spilling your drink, Mayor. Huh? Oh, oh uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't sleep much last night. Well, I can't say as I blame you. What with your friend Paladin hightailing it out of town the way he did. Now, I don't worry about Paladin. He'll be back. You can count on that. Yes, sir. He'll be back short of shooting. He, he said he would. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, we'll know for sure in about six hours. I've been to the bank. Here's my $500. Oh. You'll be handing it back double by 4 o'clock, but I might as well make it legal, like. Yeah, sure, Jack, sure. <laughs> you look kind of green, Mayor. Here. Have another drink. You could use it. Uh, <coughs> you sure you won't have a little steak, Mr. Mayor? Uh, oh, no, no, thanks, Marsh. Uh, this coffee will do fine. Oh, you city folk don't eat enough to keep a skinny coyote alive. Uh, Marsh... Yeah. Uh, why not send your riders back to the ranch? Well, that wouldn't be very smart, Mr. Mayor, with a whole Sanders outfit in town. But there's sure to be trouble. Uh, pass salt, will you? Yeah, oh, sure, sure. Thanks. There was going to be trouble before your friend Paladin stuck his nose into our business, and there's still going to be trouble. 
The only way to settle it. But, Marsh, the, the, the folks in town. Everybody took the cover already. Mayor, stores is closed. Wind is boarded up. Nothing can stop it now. But you you got to wait till four. You both promised you oh, would. Oh, we'll do that. Jack and me got it all figured. He's got the east end of town. Me and my boys has the west. Come four o'clock, we meet you in front of the hotel and collect our betting money. What then, Marsh? Then? <laughs> well, sir, if you don't find yourself a nice solid hiding place, you're going to be as full of holes as this here town of yours. <laughs> What time you make it, Jack? I just looked. Five to four. Are you sure your watch ain't fast? Ain't never been fast before. Ain't now, Mr. Mayor. Uh, how about another 24 hours? Until uh, we hear from Paladin. Nope. Twelve? Uh, Not a chance. Our men are at either end of town. They're itching for a fight. They're going to get it. You ain't going to be seeing that Paladin feller, Mayor. He left his thousand so they could get out of town in one piece. 24 hours gave him a pretty good start. You might as well start paying off, Mayor. But uh, I got two minutes. Now. Uh, who's coming? Why, that looks like Paladin. Yeah, it is Paladin. He did come back. He's got less sense than I thought he had. Hey, well, what's he waving at us? Some kind of papers? Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. Hello, Jim. Oh. Gentlemen, I'm glad you waited for me. Well, you got here just in time to see us get your money. Let's not be hasty. I've got something to say. Oh, it better be real powerful, Paladin. It just might be, Jim. Mr. Jordan, Mr. Sanders. I represent a client who says that you have no right to endanger lives in the future of Preston Valley by starting a range war to settle your differences. What makes this client of yours think he's got any right to say something that local? Well, let me see. This client of mine has nearly 15,000 head of cattle. What's that? Which I believe is more than your two ranches combined. My client has over 500 head of horses, counting working and breeding stock. What are you pulling, Paladin? There ain't no such My line. client works about 100,000 acres of land, which is more than both of you have, and he's got nearly 150 men. I don't believe it. Hmm. If you take a look around the edge of town, you'll see these men are just waiting for you two to start something. They're well-armed and ready to fight for their rights. Paladin, what outfit are you talking about? It's not one outfit, Jordan. You see these legal papers here? These are the Articles of Incorporation for the Preston Valley Stockman's Association. The what? Those men out there are the smaller ranches in this valley, with all their men. Now, you add up their holdings, you'll find that neither of you gentlemen can come close to them. Well, they can't do this to us. Hold on, Jack. I don't know. With that many men out there, might be they could. What do you want, Paladin? They want you to join the Stockman's Association been formed to protect and aid all ranchers. Any disputes will be settled fairly and squarely by everyone who belongs. Hmm. And they figure this valley is big enough for the little men and the big ones. Well, so that's where you've been, riding all over the valley to organize them. Each man that signed helped sign up others, and every one of them, to a man, hopes that you two will join up also. They even think that one of you would make a good first president of the association. Even old John Nichols and Pete Culver? You can see for yourself. They're all signed. Here, let me see that. Yeah. I came here to do a job. Now, I'm not interested in taking your money. If you sign up, I'll donate my winnings to get the association treasury off to a good start. Yeah. You will, Paladin? That's right, Jim. Well, but I still get my fee, right? Oh, sure, sure. Anything you ask. Well, gentlemen, it's, uh, it's after four. Hmm. What do you think, Jack? Well, uh, what about the president? I, I might take the job. What do you mean, you... And you'll both sign? Well, I'll sign. All right, all right. I'll I'll go along. Good. You won't regret it. Jim, can you call a meeting? Can I call a meeting? Oh, Paladin is mayor of this fair city of Preston. I'll call as many meetings as you want whenever you want them. And may I say now... No, no, you may not. You call off your men, Marsh. Yours, Jack. The association will call off theirs. All right. Yeah, um... Well, what about the job of president? Yeah, what about that job? Well, gentlemen, that's something you'll have to settle with ballots, not bullets. Oh, I'm 
Mr. Paladin, look what just came for you. Well, look out. Be careful there. You'll you break your backs. Put it down. Oh. Easy now. Ah, yeah. Also, oh, he was just arrived from the freight office. Yes, sir. Yes. Wonder what it could be in it, Mr. Paladin. Yeah. Well, I'd say there's only one way to find out. Open it. Open it. Oh, I'll need a hammer. Hey, how I bring you one. Oh, thank you, hey boy. Now, let's see. Must be most important to be in such strong talk. <laughs> it's from Jim Ellis, Preston, Arizona. There, there. Hey, much paper, yeah, no? Much paper, yes. Uh, what in the world? Oh, Miss Apollida. Oh. Look at fancy saddles. Oh, my, oh, my. Oh, so much fine leather. Uh, so much silver. Oh, Ooh. I'll be. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's an inscription. In appreciation to Paladin from the Preston Valley Stockmen's Association, Marsh Jordan and Jack Sanders, co-presidents. Huh. I wondered how they'd settle that. Next time you refresh... Enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Rod Peterson. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Lawrence Dobkin, and William Redfield. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>